can I just be like who I am normally? I think that this scene is boring as shit. You wanted to face them here. Well, who doesn't want to face the second best team in the world? But every team that's gone up against them have played literally fucking shit. Because there is no personalities. Nobody stands out. I mean, I do all the work because I'm the best player in the world. Everyone is just this bland ass pro that goes says, oh, they played well, I'm so happy for them, I hope they win. Nobody does that. Nobody really hopes someone else wins. I hope I win. G2 will take the win! With the personalities in our team, we expect ourselves to win everything we play. There's no excuses now. They have everything to lose now. We have 0-2. This is our next map. At the end of the day, I think that that team is nowhere near as successful as they are without them. Nobody's going to be as dominant as us again. They're not going to be this sort of era ever again. Fabian Fabian Halston isn't your typical siege head. He wasn't a prodigy in Source, CSGO, or Call of Duty. He didn't grow up grinding deathmatch lobbies or rough and tumble rounds of search and destroy. Fabian wasn't a fragger. He was a thinker, a strategist. It's actually quite funny because I come from like hardcore strategy games, not in the sense like Age of Empires. I come from games like Europa Universalis 4, like a map of the world that you just can conquer with any country you'd like to play. So I come from those games. And yet, in spite of his competitive nature, Fabian wasn't particularly drawn to multiplayer. In fact, he spent a lot of his time avoiding servers altogether. Instead, he'd spend hours pitting himself against the most obstinate opponent of all, the computer. So, single player games can be very stimulating. I feel like if I can challenge myself and put a difficulty on a game to one where I actually have to work really hard to beat it, that could help me more than actually playing against other players. And it can stimulate my brain into a level where I will think outside of the box just because I know I need some other way than the default way to get through something. That all changed, of course, when this Swedish savant first got his hands on Siege, a tactical shooter that let him flex his intelligence over his aim. Soon, he'd made it into Pro League and was starting to make a name for himself. Fabian and KS peek him at the same time for an easy kill, though, and they will get back in and onto the diffuser with ease. Fabian was promising. The problem was that his heart wasn't in it. After year one, season three, the girlfriend that I was with currently, we broke up and I was feeling miserably. I was failing, failing university because I was spending too much time playing. And you know, like you break up with your girlfriend, nothing feels really good in life. So I decided to quit the game. I was like, this is what's actually ruining things for me. Three months later, some of my real life friends actually buy the game. And they're like, they have no idea what level I've been playing on before. They have like, they, they don't know me. Like, they don't know what I've been doing when I was at uni. And I was like, okay, you guys want to play this game? And I'm like, oh, and they're like, yeah, yeah, sure, let's let's go play together. I'm like, I'm pretty good at it. Um, two weeks later, I've started talking with Jonas again, which is my former teammate, and we've created a professional team and gone back to pro league. The roster in question was Penta Sports, where Fabian not only was given the chance to play alongside his former teammate, Yunus, but an extraordinary up-and-comer whose talent Fabian had spotted a mile away. Now, Jorgert's coming around the corner, and this is the headshot here for Pangu. And Pangu still, he's still fighting for his life. And Falco taking down Spoken with a team kill, and Pangu punishing him. Surprisingly enough, Fabian decided to adopt a purposefully nonchalant attitude towards his prodigal return to Pro League. Me and Jonas have the idea, what do we want to do? We want to have fun. We love this game, we think it's amazing, but it takes too much time to practice it every day. We decided, let's just play for fun, practice maybe three times a week, then you have more than enough time to do whatever you want on the side. The problem, of course, is that Fabian had a knack for winning. And once he tasted it, it was hard not to keep coming back for more. It's when we started winning events. Because the events paid so much more than getting my normal salary. And I was going to be a teacher, so for me, going from being a teacher, making barely any money at all, to doing full-time esports where I have a decent salary and I actually win quite a lot of money, that's when I decided for me to be full-time. Over the course of 2017, Penta solidified themselves as the single most dominant siege roster in Europe. And eventually, the world. You're gonna see a dual peak here. They're gonna say, look for the corners. They're gonna go one, two, three. They're gonna go for the shot, and he misses one. He's not gonna look for the style, but he gets it. And now it's gonna be Fabian getting the win for his team. This Ladies is the grand final champions. Penta's gonna have time to get the diffuser down, and we are gonna see Penta win this all. They are the world champions right now for season one. At a time when Siege was still in its infancy, Fabian was strategizing and in-game leading like no other. 
he was able to see the game in a way that no one, not even his teammates, had ever imagined. It, it must be those single player games, it has to be. Like, he's always playing single player games, Take Another World, you know, Mastermind, all this. Um, I think he's really good at coming up with unorthodox scenarios and strategies that works well in the moment, but would never work long term. Under Fabian's direction, Penta became the fiercest squad in Siege, and the first to rack up back-to-back -back Pro League titles. And it looks like Penta Sports is gonna be the champions here! They're gonna be the Season 2 champions for the Pro League of Rainbow Six Siege! With literally the world's best roster at his disposal and an equally cerebral coach at his side, Fabian established the greatest dynasty Siege has ever seen. And boy, did he love to flaunt it. With the personalities in our team, we expect ourselves to win everything we play. Look where we are now. Yours in your hands to defend. Well, the trophy fit good in my hand last season. It might as well do this one too. But that overconfidence came to bite Penta in the ass during their semi-finals against Brazilian hopefuls Black Dragons in the third season of that year's Pro League. It's now Fabian, it's all up to him! And a one on two, Julian and Wag! Can he get it? Fabian's gonna dip around the grand, he won't get it! Julio gets the frag! Black Dragons goes to the grand final! Taking down the last two season dual champion, Penta Sports! As much of a fan of Penta as I am, I think this is a slap in the face that they needed. They got way too cocky, especially Fabian, and this is the wake-up call. Now, you prepare for the Invitational by being a bit more humble than what you've been throughout the season. We had an element of overconfidence coming out of year two, season two, uh, which is why I think we probably performed so bad in Brazil. Penta had become a little complacent, and even though everyone knew they were the best team in the world, they'd yet to win the big one, the tournament that would cement them as gods of the game, the Invitational. It's the biggest tournament on every single front, every single way, and it's where you want to be, it's where you need to be as a player, as a team. It's, it's whether or not we can get back on the horse. We need to show that we're able to recover from uh, the mistakes that we made in Brazil and that we can continue to innovate and really push ourselves. And innovate they did. After demolishing their group, Penta coasted through the playoffs without dropping a single map. People figured that Penta's grand final matchup against the rowdy and resilient defending champions, Evil Geniuses, would just be a formality, a wash. And it was, just not in the way they expected. We lose the first two maps, we get smashed. They played so much better than we did. Somehow, someway, Penta had tripped out of the gate. Stunned, scared, and on the brink of elimination, they needed Fabian to right the ship. To step up and knock some sense into his team. Because God knows they needed it. And I can't be happy and I can't be glad and not shout at you if we don't do our basic shit. They are shitting their fucking pants boys, right now. Boys, this is it. There's no excuses now. Yeah. They have everything to lose now. We have zero two. This is our next map. You can't really give yourself hope. That needs to come from someone else when you're down. That was Fabian in that tournament. Penta were pissed pressured and primed to make the run of a lifetime. And that was a very good play there. Necrox distracted Fabian taking NVK the second time around. This Monty push that we see from Penta is absolutely crushing EG now. Canadian once again in a situation where he will need to clutch. It's a 1v4, taken down to next to no health. He'll take Goga, but he now has a shield in his way. Very difficult with only one. Be able to eliminate a Monte, but Penta takes their first map. Round after round, map after map, Fabian and his team rallied. Two versus four, Yunus from deep inside of the server stairs will get BC. Young responds onto Pengu. There's only one defender left to deny this, and it's not gonna happen. And with EG refusing to give up, it was on the Swede to stay cool in the clutch. Fabian all alone in theater. He sticks the diffuser, waits for the audio kit. Young will need to cover. There is a C4 from Fabian. He primes it. Canadian falls off. He goes down. Young will need to get in. He has only 10 seconds, and he enters. They will be in a standoff. Can he get the Valkyrie? Two seconds. Young pushes up, running out of time. Neither get it. Penta, hold on. Oh, my. Match point. And then finally, in the last moments of what has since been dubbed the greatest series of Rainbow Six ever played, 
Penta brought their unthinkable comeback to a close. The diffuser in a position where they'll have to see when the Hibana goes through. One will cover the doorway as they start to defuse. Pengu goes for one on the young. Can he go the second? They're off the known as the best team in the world, never having that distinction until today. Penta are your world champions. The second invitation. From that point on, Fabian's rule was absolute. A narrow loss to Team Liquid in the Season 7 Finals and an upset at DreamHack Valencia marked the only two blemishes on an all but perfect performance in 2018. And thus, a meme took shape. I mean, I do all the work because I'm the best player in the world. That's great to hear. <laughs> he's like, individually, he's the worst player in our team, but he still like manages to be, play so consistently because he does some such smart moves and everything and his side jailing is the same. Fabian had proven that he was, in a sense, the greatest force the game had ever seen. So he decided to run with it. The thing that makes them refer to him as that is himself, right? Because he says, I'm the best player in the world. And the reason why it works is because he isn't, right? And he knows that, so it's funny. Me individually, that's obviously a meme. I mean, I've never thought I've been the best player ever. It, it, it's, it's like, as soon as someone asks you who's the best player, it's like, it's the easiest way to say, yeah, it's me. You see, in addition to pushing the envelope in-game, Fabian was controversial outside of it too. Whether he was trying to stir the pot, or just speaking his mind, Fabian had developed a reputation as Siege's resident shit disturber. I just think that this scene is planned. It's, it's not fun, it's not enjoyable, it, there's no entertainment value in it. The only thing that's the entertainment value right now is how good we shoot people. There's no entertainment value in the people. Actually, I'm fine until now because I have to talk to you, Parker, and it's, you know, it's not the time that I enjoy the most out of my days. If it's a slow day, one of us will usually tweet about the other because we think it's funny. It's good content. We're good friends. And if it just it plays into, like, like, the whole, like, we hate each other, and then people don't understand that it's theater. Fabian pretty much had license to say or do whatever he wanted. After all, he had the trophies to back it up. Uh, you know what I think about best of ones, they're complete tr crap and there's no competitive integrity to best of ones. They shouldn't exist on this level of game. Uh, so anything can happen. We can go out, we can be number eight because best of ones doesn't show anything. Now playing under G2, he led his roster to a resounding victory at the inaugural six major in Paris. EU close to getting the victory and he goes down. G2 will take the win. I hate to use the word unstoppable, but G2 are unstoppable. They went on to secure season eight of Pro League, at which point it simply felt as if, save a few blips, no other roster had or would ever stand a chance. Fabian, can you guys be stopped? I mean, sometimes it's gonna happen. I mean, it happened in Atlantic City, it's happened in Valencia, and I can't remember where we were Sao Paulo. That was the last time we were in Brazil. We can't be stopped, just not today. But come the new year, G2's performance had started to plummet, and the community was puzzled as to why. The only possible explanation, it felt, was that G2 were simply so good, so dominant, that Fabian had made the ballsy decision to save strats until the 2019 Invitational. Needless to say, the community was right. So we're terrible on paper, right? We've been saving strats on purpose, we've been trying to innovate ourselves, like, really restrictively, and showing as little skin as possible. So going to this tournament, we have a variety of maps that we haven't exposed yet, uh, less study on us, we look bad on paper, and most importantly, I think all our opponents are extremely scared because we are the winning champions. For the second year in a row, they topped their group, sailed through the bracket, and squashed the hopes of their last remaining opponent, a group of feisty Russian hopefuls known as Team Empire. But for the time being, there will be great patience. There you see it, Fabian can't land the shot. There goes Karzeka, Shepard's the last one left. He needs to get into the site and keep in mind, in a 4v1, they are the best team that has ever played Rainbow Six, and the first team to repeat as defending, reigning world champions. It doesn't matter the region. It doesn't matter the team. It doesn't matter the roster. They will find you and they will win. G2 take the six Invitational 2019. We're the best team in the world. It doesn't matter. This is our stage. We play on stage. We know what to do with the pressure. It's fine. We won. Fabian had reached the pinnacle. 
He'd solidified himself as the god emperor of his game. The problem is that, like everyone who undergoes a meteoric rise to the top, there was nowhere left to go but down. It was our stage. I think that as long as you believe you're the best team in the world, when you're on that level, you probably will be. But as soon as you start doubting yourself, you're gonna fall off. After emerging from the Invitational as the tournament's one and only two-time, it seemed G2 were taking their foot off the pedal again. But this time around, it wasn't clear that it was intentional. It felt as if G2 might actually be floundering for real. I mean, we don't really care if we go to Milan or not. Sure, it would be nice, but it's also sure. nice to have a break. Um, six months or whatever, five months to the next major. Yeah. That's what we care about and that's where we're going to win. This is very uh, true. If we go to Milan, it's a bonus. And I mean, who doesn't like some pocket money? I, I appreciate all the support from the fans. We'll see if we go there or not. With their Pro League record still in disrepair, G2 didn't just fail to win the Season 9 Finals, they failed to qualify. I mean, we've been saving so much strats and we've been kind of taking a vacation. I went to Hawaii for three weeks and I actually played from there. Um, no, we've just played bad. Come the sixth major in Raleigh, it felt as if G2 just couldn't lose as if their dynasty couldn't falter, and Siege was still squarely situated under Fabian's rule. And for a while, that was true. He can't go through the construction as he turns the corner. One will lock him down. It'll be canceled to Keddy, and that is G2, the reigning world champions, to the quarterfinals of the Raleigh Major. Shockwave completely surrounded as the plant is going down momentarily. They will pull off an all barrage him. Goga closes it out. The best support in the world on the best team in the world. They have a rematch from the Six Invitational with Empire tomorrow. But in the grand finals, it all came crashing down. Joystick's still not aware of where oh, anybody is! What? But two kills, three for Shepard, and the Empire strikes back! They will take the Raleigh Major and disbelief how quickly it comes! I didn't care. I think we lost the event, not Empire winning it. I think that we had mental issues in the team when it comes to self-confidence and possibilities to come back from them, and therefore we lost. I don't think they won it. Reeling from their loss in Raleigh, G2 fell off even harder. They failed to qualify for their second Pro League final in a row, instigated several roster changes, and missed out on a whopping five opportunities to defend their title at the 2020 Invitational. Fabian and his roster did end up making it to the event, but only because they were offered a pity invite. Well, it is a pity invite. But then again, it's also a business move from Ubisoft's side. I think that no matter who they would have invited, it would have been controversial. But then again, it wouldn't make sense to invite anyone else than us. We came second at Raleigh, we won the last Invitationals, we came third in both Pro Leagues. No matter who you discuss for otherwise, there's nobody that had those achievements, even though we were struggling the last six months. People thought G2 were washed, a shadow of their former selves. I would say that it's a low likelihood that G2 won't make it past the quarters just based on past performance. There seems to be some kind of magic with them in Montreal at this event, so who knows. But as it turned out, Fabian still had a few tricks up his sleeve. You can see it's a Chanka pick from nah. Uno there. I think that's nah. just a little bit of a jibbit. Nah, he's I'm locked it sure. in. We're surely going to see. Nah. <laughs> Okay, we're going to see a Tachanka strat there. I'm sure you've got plenty of information about those in your pocket, so I'll let you talk to oh, us sorry, about sorry, mate. That. All the research I've done into Tachanka <laughs> has just been me on my knees praying to the Lord. Much to the community's surprise, G2 exited the group stage as undefeated hopefuls. And Uno's had such a good day so far, has got it all to do to close this one out. Getting in the right angle there as well, must surely know where he's snuck away to. It's ringed around the roses once again, gonna bait it out there with the defuse. Four seconds remaining, Uno picks up, knows where he is, goes for the kill! Uno finds it, G2 will go 2-0, and after two matches, will find themselves going through to the playoffs as the first European team to go there. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. G2 lost both knockout series in quick succession, both times to an underdog. Fabian's roster just wasn't playing on the same otherworldly level it once had. Yeah, but it's fucking sick because for the last three weeks I've been playing the best siege of my life in practice. Well, practice matter. And, and then I come here and no now, one sees practice. But the worst part is I'm not even feeling stressed in the two last no, months. No, no, no. But that's when I play like ass. Honestly, when I was watching you, you seemed like you didn't know exactly what you wanted yes. to do. You yeah, seemed yeah, kind yeah. of lost. Yeah. Normally you have a good idea of what to do. Yeah. On border, you're kind of just running around. Finally, after a year of struggle, Fabian's reign came to an end. Nobody's going to be as dominant as us again. And we're not going to come back to it, I don't think. So I would say that there's not going to be this sort of era ever again. 
Following their elimination from the Invitational, Fabian and his org issued the most shocking roster announcement Siege had ever seen. G2 had benched Fabian because he'd asked them to. Anyone expected that Fabian would be leaving G2. He said that the team's atmosphere wasn't great anymore, and he just doesn't think that they should play together anymore. Fabian is, in no uncertain terms, the most accomplished captain, strategist, and in-game leader in the history of Siege. It isn't clear what his future holds, but what is clear is that it doesn't feel like his story is coming to an end. It just feels like the start of a new chapter. Fabian is probably one of the smartest players that play Rainbow Six right now. What he makes up, for, or what he lacks in, I guess, like mechanical skill or ability, he makes up for in game sense. He probably has one of the highest game IQs out of anybody, period. It remains to be seen whether he'll be able to inspire yet another roster to reach unimaginable heights. But one thing is for certain. After winning everything, after earning the greatest titles in Siege and defending them, Fabian remains as hungry as ever. Do you feel like you've lost your motivation to once again become the No, greatest? you don't even have to finish that question for me to answer it. I will never lose my motivation to be the best. I believe in myself. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that I was the best. It doesn't matter what I think when I go on stage. If I think that I'm not the best guy when I go into a duel, I'm not going to win it. Never doubt yourself. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.